So, this will be a tutorial for everyone. Um, highly recommend as a good starter this this Sylvia Spec R. You don't have to choose it. You could choose anything about similar range, um, high or low, BMWs, Mercedes, that sort of stuff. Work perfectly fine. A lot of American muscle cars work good for this as well. But you want something front engine, rear wheel drive. Anyway. The way you tune a car is sub triple five. You don't focus too much on power. That's the biggest problem you see in people tuning drift cars is they throw a thousand horsepower at a car and wonder what happens. So the first thing you want to do, it depends on how much money you've got, but I'd recommend after you've bought the car having at least fifty grand on you. So not too not too much money. Good start is weight reduction rip the hell out of it. That's a good 200 kilos out of the car. Immediate performance boost. Okay, the car's already better. Then you go to your springs and dampeners and throw on that mad drift suspension. Now it's not essential to drift. You can drift with normal suspension, but drift suspension gives you mad angle. Way easier to drive. You then want to go into drivetrain, which is these little wheel options here. You want to go to transmission and buy the best one. You also want to go to the differential and again buy the best one. The transmission will allow you to tweak your gearing for better control, better power control I should say, and your differential you can lock up the rear wheels makes it way easier to drift. If you want to as well I'd recommend a clutch upgrade. This allows you to change gears quicker and keep on the power for longer. Now from here is sort of style points you can change the grip levels for your preference this car doesn't have much horsepower so you don't really need to changing the wheels again cosmetic you can make your car just a tiny bit lighter or heavier depending on the wheels but it's not a huge difference um, as for the wheel poke I'm not going to touch those because not all cars have them but that's again personal preference it does help stability a little bit in terms of horsepower now this car comes with how much 168 kilowatts, so about 250 horsepower. Now, it's up to you if you want to run it in stock. What I would recommend is, if any car, go into camshaft and fully upgrade that. Now, not only is it giving a nice bump in horsepower, but as you can see on the scale, it lets you rev a lot higher. And high revs are good. Don't worry about the turbo yet, mainly because turbo lag. We don't have, you can upgrade brakes, I'm going to. It just makes it that little bit easier. You shouldn't need brakes when you're drifting, but as a, as a beginner, I would recommend it. Just in case something goes wrong, you can quickly smack the brakes. So, as you can see, over the base stock car, I've added almost 100 horsepower. The car is way lighter, a lot more fun. Now, the tuning of a car, the best way to tune a car is to put a, a very base tune on it and then that tune will let you know how to tune itself. So the tuning way is you leave the tires, leave them they're perfectly fine. Now your gearing, this can make or break a build, any class. So what you want to do is get the final drive. See the scale down the bottom right hand side? That, that's where your gears are. So you got 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. What you want to do is take your final drive, which moves all the gears in one, and you want to move that 6th gear so it's just in the corner. It's just disappearing. Right? That way your car will never top out, and it will let you essentially get a feel for the car. You can then tweak the gears later, but that's a good starting point. Now alignment. I personally run zero degrees in the back, that way the rear wheels have the same amount of grip no matter what angle you're throwing. And in the front, essentially the more angle you have, the twitchier your car is. So we're going to start with two degrees, for me, just to sort of not make the car too aggressive. And then from there you can up it, but I wouldn't go over say three and a half degrees unless you're really getting serious into it. Any roll bars we haven't touched, but they're fine for now. Springs, it's fully lowered because mad sickness. Dampening, try and get the front and the rear the same. Whichever is the highest number, match the small number to the high number. That's just to stiffen up the car a tiny bit. And the differential, which is the rotation speed of the rear wheels. 
So a locked diff means both wheels spin at the same rate. It means the car doesn't turn as well, like on the road, but it will drift way better because it slides. Because obviously when you're going around a corner, the inside wheel is turning less than the outside wheel. So the diff would counter that. So if you want a race car, you want the opposite of that, essentially. But there we go. So that is what I call a bass tune. So the way you want to drift, you want to be drifting where your horsepower, so your revs, your RPM, your taco, whatever, is right around the red line. You don't want to be bouncing all over the place because that's wasting power. Now you hear that? Nah, 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 nah. We don't want that. So second gear was revving way too high, third gear is a bit too, sorry, a bit too long, I should say. So what you do is, in that scenario, go to your cars, go to tune your car. Now, turning to the slider to the right makes the gear shorter, so it builds up rev quicker, but it's lower speed. And to the left is, makes it longer. So as we said, the third gear is just a little, little too long. So give it a couple of clicks to the right and see on the graph it, it makes it shorter and then so to make it, the car work a bit better we also bring all the other gears in line to match it so they should be each gear should be shorter than the last there we go that should be a good start now you can have a car that only drifts on one gear or you can have a car that drifts on three gears it really depends on your style so look at that third gear, we're right on 8,000 RPM. That third gear is almost perfect. We want the rev right on the, right on the edge. So if it's bouncing off the limiter too much, that means it's wasting power. I can prove that to you. So it's up in the top left, we see how much, in kilowatts though, but you can imagine it, how much power we're using. See when we bounce off the limiter, hang on, I'll put in first gear. See the power? It goes up and down like crazy. So if you're drifting in first gear, you're wasting, you're not using power. See, every time it bounces off the limiter, you lose power for just a second. The trick is to practice the same section over and over again and just, just really get it down. Is, is the key to drifting is just repetition. Rather than going, oh, I need a faster car, I need a better car. Just stick with the same car till you've got it down. Then try adding a bit more horsepower. Now bear in mind, you'll get to a point where your horsepower will be more than your tires can take. So then up your tires. Or if you just need a tiny bit more grip, make your tires wider. Wider is a good way of adding just that little bit extra grip without going overboard. But as your horsepower goes up, you should think about your tires. Every couple hundred horsepower, you should be going up in tires. Now you don't have to. You could have a thousand horsepower on stock tires. The car will just be an absolute handful because it be very, very slippery. And always make sure that your front and rear tires are either identical or your front tires are wider. So if you have rear tires that are wider, it means that once the car starts sliding, you won't have the grip in the front to hold on to it. So essentially, right now this car, it handles well, but it's too slow. So, firstly, I want to put some nice wheels on it. Now, as I said before, cosmetic enhancements in terms of this and like body kits and stuff, the, they make such a little difference. What's up, class? They make a, a, a little difference. Nothing nothing too drastic. But as I said before, it's more of a personal preference on what you'd like the car to look like. Um, visual upgrades too. If they look good, they normally weigh more. The performance ones actually give you downfalls. Anyway, so now we've made the car look nice. And that looks pretty sweet. We can add power. So there's a lot of ways you can add power. Upping the displacement gives the car a bit more low down power. Valves. Well, look, we'll, we're going to do get up to 300 kilowatts. Actually, a bit more. Yeah, 300. That'll, that'll do for now. Weight reduction. We're also going to add anti-roll bars. This will stiffen the car up. And a flat drift car is a good drift car. You want little body roll. That being said, you don't want to too stiff because if you drop a tire off the road or have a bit of a mistake, the car's going to be very bumpy. 
and the roads in this game aren't perfect so I would recommend mm, stiffening your car but not too much especially if you've lowered it all the way then you're going to be bouncing and now the gearing is all messed up because obviously we've got way more power so that third gear we used to drift in now we're drifting in fourth so we probably have to tune that as well As I said, tuning a car is absolute trial and error. And uh, I'll say before and I say it again, I um, there is no wrong way to drift. As long as you are drifting, you're doing it correctly. But each person has their own style, and you need to figure that out. But yeah, it's the the, the trick is just to crack, get comfortable with your car, enjoy your car and then work on it. Just have one car that you're like, this is my dedicated drift car. And that's why like Nissan Sylvia's are always a great choice because they can go from a little street drift car to 1,000 horsepower. They can, you can compete in comps with them. Like they qualify for most, most people who do drifting, who set up like competitions and everything. The Sylvia is a very common place. Sylvia's and 240SX's, um, any of the Skylines too, rear wheel drive converted, can be good. 